Several years ago, Ninja Kiwi added a new hero to BTD6, Corvus. I believe someone at Ninja Kiwi decided to add their persona to the game. Of course, at the time of this hero being released, I was still busy playing Terraria, so I couldn't make a video on it. This brought up an interesting question. Who needs to be fired from Ninja Kiwi, but also, who is the best hero in BTD6? Now, there are a few factors that we must take into account when determining the best hero in the game. For one, what do they specialize in, and how good are they in what they specialize in? For example, Azealia is very good at being forgettable. Next, how do they work in all game modes and maps? Another example, Azealia is very good in primary only on ouch, but not very good in reverse on frozen over. And then we have some miscellaneous categories, such as looks, skins, and how much they annoy me. Let's start off with my good friend, Quincy, son of Quincy. For one, his main specialty is never missing. Are you kidding me? Nothing gets past my bow. While well, this is proven false when he meets his arch enemy, the Pink Balloon. Also, it is canon that he actually likes Gwen. And judging from this image, we can assume that he also misses with women and gets absolutely zero cheeks. He also specializes in being a cheap tower to start out with that eventually becomes good later on in the game. The problem with this is that you're going to have to have him on the map for him to be good. That's a problem because his voice is like nails on a chalkboard. Except in that analogy, the nails are more pleasing than Quincy's voice. What maps does he specialize in? None of them because all of them require him to be placed down on the map. For skins, they're special. The first skin is Robot Quincy. This might be one of the best skins in the entire game because it implied that he got his back blown out and could no longer use his legs. The other skin, again, someone's persona. Like, come on, can they make it a little more subtle that someone paid them good money to get this in the game? How does he look? Like a dumbass. How much does he annoy me? I'm embarrassed to say, but I have so much hatred for this video game character that it cannot be legally expressed. Overall, if I was in a room with him and the guy who thought of him with a gun and one bullet, I will pull out a protractor to kill all three of us. Zero out of ten, never use him. Next up, Gwendolyn. Gwen specializes in popping clump balloons, especially round 63. Every time you have Gwen on that round, you gotta hit the first wave with a cocktail. Second wave, boom, set them on fire. And the third wave, you know what you do? You know what you do? Another cocktail. She does have a weakness against the purple balloon. However, instead of being like Quincy, she can pop them when she reaches level 16, while Quincy will never pop those pink balloons. She also has heated up, a buff that she can give to towers near her. Now I get it, it does help the towers just a bit, however, when she buffs my towers, I feel like it's a placebo and my towers do 15 more damage, even though in all reality, they get one pierce and can pop leads and frozens. It does get better to an extra layer of damage with more damage to leads and frozens, but in my mind, 30,000 more damage. For maps, anything that a normal tower would work on is fine, nothing special. Skins, Scientist Gwen, this is what the kids call a blue haired baddie. I don't really know what that means, but I don't think that's good. She also has a pending copyright claim, so I will not comment on it to keep monetization. As for personality, she does not like Quincy. 8 out of 10, good hero. Oban Greenfeet. Now a while back, Oban used to be the GOAT when it came to starting out on chips. Now he's $50 more and is practically useless. He is a good hero when it comes to early game, better than Quincy at least, and even has some perks that can help him with the setup relying on magic monkeys. He also offers good support, such as the totem that slows balloons down, brambles for strays, and the wall to keep them out. He works well on maps with some form of barrier as he can see through it with his mind power. For skins, he has open water foot and open rock foot, and all three of them know the exact same few words. Still better than Quincy, who doesn't even know what he's saying. 7 out of 10. Striker Jonesy from Fortnite Battle Royale. Now his main specialty is being a support tower for the bomb shooter and mortar monkeys. And since he is an artillery commander, it shows us that he is the alpha male, which boosts his score by an unspecified amount. He has an ability that stuns balloons. I think they intend him to do actual damage, but this ability is just good support, not good damage. Now his second ability is so cheeks. His whole purpose is to reset the ability cooldown on the mortar and bomb abilities. Keep in mind, when the game came out, there was no mortar monkey, and when there was a mortar monkey, 
There was no tier 4 ability! Granted, now there's an ability for the tier 4 mortar, and level 20 striker buffs this ability to perform siege warfare on the balloons, but still, this ability is mostly useless for half of the game. Maps. He works well on maps that have enough space to fit 60 bomb shooters and 3 mortar monkeys next to him. Skins. Biker Bones is a great way to avoid copyright laws, because Marvel does not own a character by the name of Biker Bones, only Ghost Rider. And Octo Jones? Dude, why? Personality, he's an older gentleman who understands not to trust people with bows. Overall, a situational hero, 5 out of 10. But remember, he is the alpha male, so we're gonna subtract 5 from the denominator due to him being the dominant alpha and there being 5 letters in the word alpha. Now we have 5 out of 5, or 10 out of 10. Now we're gonna add that to his original score, boom, 15 out of 10. Now this hero, I'm actually excited to talk about. Captain Churchill. This hero was actually the first hero I bought when I started playing out, and I'm so glad he was the first hero. Churchill was the light to the blind, the food to the famished, the drapes for the butt booty naked, and the warmth of social interaction to my viewers. Captain Churchill was the only reason I still live to this day, so to make sure we account for my bias towards him, I will have his score in the end. And for those wondering why I let my bias affect Quincy's score, I did not. That was not bias, and it was purely objective. Now, Churchill is in a tank. Most people assume it's because he's short. However, this is actually a lie. The tank was a clever way for Ninja Kiwi to hide Churchill's big monkey cheeks. Big ass black brown cheeks bouncing as they run across the-, the He's not a short king. People who call themselves that are complete losers. I don't care that you're 5'3". You need to hide that from the masses. He's actually an astounding 7 foot 9 inches. Incredible, considering he has to fit in that tank. However, because of his magical abilities, he is able to turn the inside of his tank into a pocket dimension. This allows him to fit anything inside the tank and also pull out any weapon needed for battle. This was cut from the game, of course, because Ninja Kiwi wanted to give the other heroes a chance at competing with him. About his tank, it fires tank shells. This is actually an error because they're supposed to fire nuclear missiles. His main specialty is straight lines because he is a straight up beast. He also specializes in being the strongest hero in the entire game if you if you give him an alka buff overclock homeland defense and a sun god because this is about how strong he's supposed to be before nerfs it may still be a bit off but i think it's close enough for the test now he does cost quite a bit of money to get on the field however this is much cheaper than how much he should be 46 quintillion dollars because of how important his time is and how powerful he should be he has two abilities one of them again is a placebo it does increase the shell's pierce however in my mind it makes him do the damage that he should be doing before nerfs Next, nukes. Now, Ninja Kiwi was too scared to show his true power to summon nuclear weapons out of his tank. So they reduced it to only being a few missiles. Still, pretty good. Now, for maps, anything with a straight line is best. However, if we think about this, using Churchill's dimension bending powers, any line, no matter how curvy, is considered a straight line, which means Churchill is the first hero to work on every single map. For skins, we got the GOAT, Sentai Churchill, one of the best skins ever because he looks like a Power Ranger, and I love Power Rangers. We also got Santa Churchill, the worst skin in the entire game, a way that Ninja Kiwi used to attack our Churchill. But it will not affect the rating of the hero because I keep forgetting it exists. His personality is too magnetic to be spoken about in this video, as too many of you will fall for Churchill, so overall, he gets a 106 out of 10. But remember, I need to have his score because of bias, so he gets a 53 out of 10. Pretty good, but not the score that he should be getting. Ben Yamen. Now, Ben Yamen believes in the ways of the alpha male. Make money most of your personality. If he was a real person, this would be him. He is also an elite hacker who uses B-Hop on Hypixel Skywars, making him a genuine threat to society. Since he loves money and hacking, his main specialty is making money by hacking into your mom's bank account and wiring the funds to you so you can buy more spike factories. Because of this, the main mode he works in is Chimps Mode. He also works in half cash, but that depends on whether or not it's best for you to start with a hero that actually does damage. Of course, we cannot forget his main specialty, boss events. If someone says, yeah, I play bosses with Zeely or Quincy or Gwen and Ben is available, they are lying. That mother ah! is trying to tell you, yeah, I'm special. Mom doesn't love me enough, so I need to get attention from internet strangers by using bad heroes. Unless it's Churchill. 
then they're telling the truth. He has a hack ability that gives your towers more damage. It feels weaker than heated up, even though it does more damage, probably because it disables your towers afterwards. Because Benjamin is stupid. Why would he do that to his allies? He has a passive ability called Trojan Hack. Everyone says this ability makes you lose money, but to me, it actually saves you money. Think about this, if you place Ben early on enough, you'll have the Trojan ability by round 40 when the first Moab comes out. So when the Moab is hit by the Trojan, all you have to deal with is the outer shell. Which means you actually save money by not having to deal with its children. And Cypher Hack just takes one layer off the bloom. Again, I don't know if this makes money or makes you lose money, but I don't really care. Now for maps, all maps. He doesn't have range, he just sits there and makes you money. Skins, DJ Ben and Sushi Ben. Someone at Ninja Kiwi thought, you know what Benjamin, the alpha male grifter needs for a skin? A DJ, okay. And a sushi vendor. This must be the same person who put their first Sonus in the game. Personality, Jason Wojo, eight out of 10. Azili. I don't know, 4 out of 10? Pat Fusty. Now, Pat was actually the first melee hero in the game. Nobody uses him for his melee abilities. They use him to motivate the monkeys via verbal abuse. That's right. He will yell at your towers and make them do more damage for no extra cost. His main specialty is being a good support hero as he can yell at monkeys, throw blimps, and has the ability that lets him hug them for emotional support. Just kidding. Boom. Backblown. If you want to use Pat's War, use it with towers that have high attack speed and lower damage. This will require you to be smart, so most of you won't be able to use this hero. But basically, since it increases each projectile's damage by one, if you have a tower like Overdrive that shoots many projectiles, each of those are going to do more damage, essentially doubling the damage. But again, you do need to have a high enough IQ to understand basic addition and multiplication. Another thing to note is that he is a big boy. He needs to get his calories in, and that's probably why Sushi Ben is in the game. But don't worry, he is incredibly strong. Look at him hitting those bicep curls and bench press. Incredible. However, he does have one fatal flaw, which might affect his rating significantly. He skips legs. His arms aren't those of a chimp. They're those of a f gorilla. His legs? Flamingo. This guy is the Dom Mazzetti of monkeys. Loves to hit arms, never does legs, and of course, will viciously attack you for the wrong thing. Maps. Something that has enough space for him. A big boy like him takes up too much space. He can't even fit in door frames anymore. Skins. You got a snowman and Godzilla. Both of them skip leg day. Personality. Dom Mazzetti. 10 out of 10. I would take points off for skipping leg day, but it's bro science. I gotta let it slide. Adora the Explorer. Adora's like a ninja monkey. Homing weapons, shoots a few of them, but depending on whether or not you try to even use her, she's either more or less expensive than a ninja monkey. Adora is a damage hero with no support whatsoever, unlike Churchill giving emotional support to all monkeys by just being there. According to some, with the same buffs, she actually does more damage than Churchill, but that's not fair because when you get a sun god, she transforms into this. But Churchill's secret transformation was cut from the game for being too OP, that being anything but British. She's cheaper than Churchill, but not as cheap as Oban, so she's not really a viable starting option. It also does take a bit to get her up to a good enough level to pass the Ninja Monkey of damage, but there's an ability that makes her level up faster. We'll talk about that when we get to it. Abilities, long arms, she can see longer, pop purples, and throw farther like now her second ability is where she gets interesting, Blood Sacrifice. Why spend money on a hero when you can spend money on a monkey, then sacrifice them to an ancient sun goddess to get more XP? It makes sense because even if you add the few extra steps, you get more XP. It's great. Problem is, nobody upgrades heroes, so nobody will sacrifice anything worth more than $400. And that's just to get rid of the random sniper monkey they needed in a chimps game for round 28. I like that because he deserved it and also it gives a small buff to sun avatars but I don't care. Sunball. Summon the sun to shoot a laser beam at balloons. It's pretty good. I like it and it does even more damage at level 20. It's nice but it's not Churchill. Maps. Same thing as open. She can see through walls. Skins. Joan of Arc. Now I know a bunch of you guys watch history videos on your Chromebooks during class and think you know more about World War II than your classmates who don't give a f*** about a war that ended 80 years ago, so I don't think I need to explain who she is. Then we got Void Dora, a shadow demon who comes from the abyss that is under your bed. Yeah, she knows about the mayo jar. And all three of them can get a cool buff from the sun god, but they would not compare to Churchill with an accent that was anything but British. Personality. 
I don't know, but she sounds old. Six out of ten. Admiral Brickhead is in a small ass boat because I don't think your warship should be shorter than you. Just like a real admiral, her job isn't to go guns blazing one man army style into a war. No, she works her way up the ladder so that she can make other people do that for her. She's like the striker Jones of the water. But instead of giving her towers different buffs over time, she has one singular buff. This one buff is the ability naval tactics. At first, all it does is give double attack speed, then some more popping power, and can pop off balloons. Then finally, pierce and camo popping. Now this is good, but it's the only thing she can do to buff the submarine monkeys. She can't give them permanent increased range, better boats, crack, or even some more popping power. Other than that, she has sea mines that target balloons. The day someone wears a bright red t-shirt to work is the day the monkey navy takes a trip to the Titanic. When she first came out, she would legit launch 25 sea mines to pop 3 green balloons that entered her range at a comfortable speed. Then they fixed it to fire mines at a normal rate. But if you really want to unleash hell on round 40, there's an ability that does uh. Level 10 gives you a giant sea mine that targets mob class balloons. So the second a blue balloon comes in range, it won't ruin your 12 mega mine brain power mine pile. Overall, judging from this, she's basically like a sub commander with bombs, which is nice because the two towers work well together. Maps, if it has water, it's holding her back. She needs to realize her true potential lies outside the water. So don't go into the water and walk on the land. Skins, we got me when the only show I watch changes to a different streaming service, and we got a lifeguard to make sure the land monkeys don't make the mistake of going into the water. Personality, who cares? 6 out of 10 if she's in water, 9 out of 10 if she's out of water. NTN, I have to mention before we get into it that he is French, so he will lose points for that. On a serious note, why does everyone hate the British and the French? Like a couple centuries ago, these guys owned like half the world, and now, oh, you're from Birmingham or Leon? Don't even touch me, peasant. You are a poor person, and I hate poor people. Back to the hero, his main gimmick is having drones. He is a drone pilot. He can bomb civilians with drones. He gets points back. I've always wanted to be a drone pilot. You disagree with someone online? Boom! Try to have a different opinion. His drones are quite unique as they fly around, but you cannot control them. So most of the time, they are quite autistic and don't know how to act in front of balloons. At first, he has one drone, then two, seven, then four. The drones are alright, and with Drone Swarm, you get a few more. But really, I think he might be a support hero with the UAV, United Air Vemorets. This allows monkeys to see count balloons, and fun fact, they don't even have to be right next to him. They can be outside of this range, across the map, different map, different game, and they can still receive camo. Then at level 10, this UAV becomes the UCAF. The United Countries of the Arabic Bamarites. It turns the camo detecting plane into the Gigachad drone bomber. So I think he's a damage hero. Everything after that is worthless, except level 20. It makes the UCAP permanent, and using the ability amplifies your civilian bombing experience. It's not the best for damage, but it's good considering he gets to level 20 naturally before round 100. Maps. Stuff like, like this, or this. If it looks painful to play on, he's probably good on it. Skin, an alien. This is fitting because he's not from here. It's like he's from a different planet, so we need to send him back. And bookworm. Look, they can't even spell worm right. I can't even read, and I know how to spell it. At first, you can see he's reading books for children, or for us alpha men who don't know how to use the English vernacular. Then he's reading books with pictures and words, so I don't like them. Then NASA papers on the solar system once he gets a plane. Of course, to celebrate him getting a UCAP, he's reading up on some classified CIA documents on which small third world country needs a fireworks show. And finally, at level 20, he's done with the system, and he's proofreading his own manifesto to ship out to stores worldwide. Universities get a special dish that comes with a clock. Personality, either alien, green, or a terrorist, 7 out of 10. Sada, she's a melee hero like Pat Busty, but this time, people actually use her for her melee abilities, not her violent tendencies and comforting hugs. Now, for a hero who costs about as much as Quincy with a small ass range, you would expect her to be complete garbage. Turns out she's actually not that bad. I hate to say this, but she's probably one of the best heroes in the game and might be a little better than Churchill. For stars, on certain maps, she's a very good starting hero, being able to take on many of the first few rounds with very little help, allowing you to afford the tower you think will win you the game, but instead will hold you back and make you lose. And even after a while, she is still good damage and doesn't feel like a waste of an ALK buff. It's not just her damage that's good, her ability 
abilities are also quite effective at any stage of the game. For one, we got some flying daggers. Watch as Sada gracefully flies into the sky and strikes down her opponents into the ground. If used correctly, she can one-shot the kids inside of a Moab, so her ability kind of works like a pseudo Trojan hack. Level 7, she preys on the weakness of the balloons. That's just a funny way of saying she's a predator. Level 9, how the hell can rubber bleed? She might actually be a magic hero because you can't do that. Then at level 10, she gets a sword run or something. That's why you're not allowed to run with scissors. It's very good for cleanup, but somehow it gets better at level 20. Now, instead of running through the map one time, she will do it three times. That's right. If once wasn't good enough, she will make sure everything dies. It's like if Churchill's level 10 ability didn't just hit a few mobs, but instead every single one on the map and then the next round too yeah that's nice level 13 she can pop everything most heroes can't consistently pop balloons that are a different color and sauna's over here with her stupid swords cutting lead so overall judging from her insane popping power abilities her insane abilities cheap costs and speedy level ups she might be one of the best heroes in the game for maps she works on something that has a place where you can put her and she gets a good bend or intersection not something where she has to take a short plane ride to get to the nearest balloon. Skins, a viking. How do you compete with that? Like Gwen has a scientist skin, Ben can be a SoundCloud rapper, Quincy has a robo dick, God knows what Azili has, but Sada, a f ah! viking, known for their murder and pillage strats. Then this, I don't know what this is supposed to be. Am I racist for not understanding ancient Chinese culture? Probably. Personality, I legit don't care. 9.6 out of 10. She gets the decimals because she's Asian. She understands complex math concepts. Sai, this is a literal child. Why are you here? There are bombs going off and you're just sitting there while I tell my monkeys fire on sight and feel no remorse. Piss is a bit special as they believe in spirituality, not the actual stuff. They're five years old. They don't know what that means. They believe in the stuff you can find on YouTube about why your life monkey. sucks and how it's the sun's fault. These videos allowed for Sai to blow stuff up with their ah! mind powers. This is on par with watching too much Rick and Morty you, and ending up being too Morty. smart to interact I'm with real women. Morty. So now you have to talk to AI women so they have a chance at competing with you in knowledge. Now Sai's mental powers aren't just limited to a range. In fact, they have no range. And at the same time, they have all the range in the world. It's a paradox, like how you're the smartest person in every room and yet somehow your brain can't comprehend why your dad doesn't love you. Sai's actual attacks hold the balloon in place until it dies. It's kind of brutal. You are not leaving. You will feel everything. That makes sense though. We are putting a small child in a war zone. They're gonna learn some new psychological warfare tricks, like COD, except that ends up teaching my kids racial slurs that the cool kids club don't even know about. At level three, PSI can mentally stun their opponents nearby by telling them about the thug shaker. Very effective strat, I must say. This stuff is boring, so it doesn't count, but this ability actually does count. What it does is it causes a facade of an economic crash in balloon land, causing the balloons to go into a frame and not know where they're going. And by level 20, only the bad is safe from this torture. Even though I caused this, I feel bad. But like, I don't think I should care though. Now this shows that Sai is basically a cyber bully. Now think about it. They don't actually face the person they're ah! talking. They hide away from them and act like they're smarter than them. And then they say they f <laughs> they f your mom, and now you lost. The problem with Sai is that they can't say they f ah! four people's mom at the same time. They can only do three at a time, but that's not fast enough before you lose, or in this case, get called the N word. For maps, something that can let Sai sit in the corner and dox people. That's a good idea. Skins, piss and balls, turns Sai into a band kid. I can see why people don't like this skin. Personality, somehow more of a gamer than Ben. 6 out of 10. Look at that, I'm basically Eminem. Jeremiah, the dude literally sells action figures, drugs, magical genies, and bunnies. So there's a lot to go through. Obviously, he is different compared to the other heroes. With most heroes, you put them on the map, tell them to piss off, and then they level up. Except Adora, she will kill for XP. For Geraldo, you follow the same procedure, except now you can't tell him to piss off because you're going to talk to him later to buy pickles. So yeah, you have to pay him to be on the map, and in return, he'll help you if you're rich. Just like health insurance. 
God, I love America. At first, he only has a few items. This one is just like a dart monkey that might be worse, but I can't tell. These are road spikes because I miss spamming road spikes in BTD2. This one is so ugly that some balloons are repulsed from its facial structure. And pickles make your tower attack slower but deal more damage. This is actually the real side effect of eating pickles. Then he levels up and he gets all this stuff. I'm gonna go fast, okay? This is a Funko Pop, not an NFT. See things you normally can't see, and they're not songs of being gang stalked. I love Monkey Blue from BT2. Make darts sharper, play pretend hard enough, and you'll believe it. This is the bane of round 63. These make your towers feel like white people drinking Dr. Pepper. Plant growth hormones. Cute little bunnies that go eight ah! in groups. You suck at timing and this game, so here's an ability for you. We couldn't afford a Spectre, so we bought you a Genie. He can't grant wishes. And finally, you'll forget to use us with your Degree 23 Paragon. Overall, he's different. A bit special, as one would say. But I think he's actually a hustler. And when you put him on the map, congratulations, you have been hustled. Though it's not as bad as getting scammed by Quincy by putting him on the map. In fact, Jeremiah is so good that he was able to solo chimps by himself. Now granted, that was a while ago, and it's not that impressive when you realize he acts as at least five different towers. That's good, because he can either be an offensive hero, support hero, crypto scammer, maps. I, I don't really know. His attacks by themselves suck, so he's really there for the items. So anything if you try hard enough. Skins. He doesn't have any skin because the only way you can portray a scummy capitalist who wants all of your money is a Spanish man. Personality. What do you think? He wants your money and will sleep with your wife. 9 out of 10. And finally, the whole reason I made this video. The new Corvus. Now, ever since Jeremiah, Ninja Kiwi have been trying to make this game make you feel smart by making it more complicated. Now, Jeremiah, he used our currency. I can handle that. The Beast Handler, I just don't use him. But Corvus, Ninja Kiwi gave him his own currency with a USD exchange rate and f backed by gold. I play this game to forget about the fact that I'm stupid. And now we got Corvus with his real magic dollars. And I need Ninja Kiwi to remember that I'm an idiot. It's surprising I'm still able to get an education. So anything that doesn't shoot to kill confuses me. Corvus's currency is mana. It is used to purchase magical abilities for him and his little spirit thingy. The thingy has infinite range, like Psy, except this thing has to get its steps in and move across the entire map to pop a red balloon. It's pretty okay, but it can be improved with some of these magical abilities. Now, some of them help the spirit, some of them help the hero, and some just do whatever they want. So I'm gonna go through all of them very quickly and tell you which ones are good and which ones make Quincy look good. Heart of Thunder Remastered. It's actually good for group balloons. Downdraft Demastered. Blood Sacrifice re -envision. Use this if you have Soul Harvest ready to instantly get back mana. I don't think I talked about that yet. Fuck. Mitotic Cell Division. Use this one. Adderall. Mr. Hand. This one is not good. Don't use it. Mana Shield. For those who don't know how to play this game. This one hurts you more than anything. Camo Detection. With cheap aviators you buy at Walmart. 30 Day Trend Challenge. That's pretty fun. The Aftermath of a Taco Bell Crunch Wrap Supreme. It's like a small wall of fire. Ah! This one. I don't know how to use it. And this one too. Even though it's good. ODS. Good, but expensive. Meditation rituals learned from the same video that Sai I'm watched. I'm I mean, it's okay. A legit bomb. Use wisely to pop big balloons, group balloons, or to get off school early. All these abilities require mana. Some of them will keep eating away your mana. Some of them are a one-time cost. Overall, trying to use all these abilities makes me feel like I'm playing Five Nights at Freddy's. For actual abilities, this one gives you mana, Chinook, and the Ring of Fire. So overall, this tower is great when it comes to long-distance murder, like Sai, except now you can blow stuff up. Maps, literally anything, as long as Corvus can get close enough to the track to benefit from Soul Harvest. Skins, nothing. Like, actually nothing. But I do have some ideas because of his personality. He sounds like Jack from Lord of the Flies. If you guys ever learned how to read, you'll understand what I mean. Either that or Robin from Teen Titans Go. Imagine that. We have a psychopathic killer willing to throw away his morals for his own wants and some kid on an island, 7 out of 10. So in this video, we have covered a lot of heroes. Some are good at one thing, others are good at another thing, some are good at everything, and some are complete ass. So now, who is the best hero in BTD6? It's a tough choice, 
but I'm going to go with the hero that got 53 out of 10. The best hero of them all, Captain Churchill. If you think that's wrong, you fight me.